Hi everyone, good evening. <clears throat> we'll wait for a minute or so for everyone and then we can take start. But in the meanwhile, why don't you, uh, you know, just, just for my understanding, uh, can I just have a, you know, a brief check in terms of, you know, where you guys are as in what exactly you're doing right now at this point in time from the SBR standpoint, where exactly you are at from the syllabus era standpoint. Anybody would like to like kickstart that? Rangan? I know, you know, I know a lot about, you know, where you are, but, you know, just for me to do a, you know, status check, where are you from the syllabus area standpoint now? Uh, yeah, hi, sir. Uh, hi, everyone. Sir, I just completed this uh, RBC and I am, you know, revising your, uh, uh, those IFRS again. And uh, during that uh, revision also, I am in session nine, actually. And I'm, sir, uh, practicing those questions, whatever listed in those sessions uh, in Excel. And sometimes also the practicing platform, what is available in ACCA. Very nice. Uh, very yeah. nice. So this is the thing. But, sir, uh, uh, very honest uh, to you. So RBC question, I think, sir, uh, I need to revise once more. And then I need to practice. Then I think I can get that hold on those questions. Fair enough. So... It, you know, honestly, uh, Rangan, the way I always suggest, and you would have heard this earlier also, and of course in the sessions, I do feel that revision bootcamp needs to needs to be revised at least two times. One, you know, and uh, there are times when you feel that you know it, but when you do questions by your own hand, you get to realize that oh, oh you know, I'm I'm yeah. lacking on this place, yeah. and I'm not yes, really sir. prepared as of now on this area, and so on and so forth. So better is that you know we do not miss on that and and have those questions done by your own hand so that you're not missing on that. But the good piece is, and you know, since you have, you know, we're standing on, let's say, 24th of September, and you've completed all the syllabus areas, and of course, you're almost halfway through the revision, <clears throat> revision boot camp, the best piece is that we can reasonably presume that, let's say, by next month end or so, everything would have been done. So effectively, you have one full month to practice questions. And that's where, you know, the... You know, it can be a game changer for you because the more you would practice the past exam questions, some of it has already been covered in revision bootcamp. So, you know, it is already done to an extent, but the more you'll practice the past exam questions in the ACCA practice platform, better you are from the standpoint of hitting this exam in the best possible way. So do not, do not really miss on that. And we will be having, you know, as we go forward, we will be having some, some live check-ins like this wherein we will touch up, you know, touch upon few of the areas that you really need to go through. I do have uh, three current issues which have recently got added to the strategic business reporting exam, which I've already incorporated into the, into the sessions that we have. So that is already now with you. Uh, just go through that because I personally feel that, you know, th these current issues will be surely tested in, in, you know, in, in December or so. I can tell you one thing, one, um, uh, Current issue got tested in September also. Out of these three, one was tested in September also. So okay. you can all the more expect that you know something or the other might come in December too. So do not do not miss on that. Sustainability was something that came up in September, and of course you know as you go forward, you know things may again come your way out of these current issues since they are like recent recent ones. You never know if if examiner pushes something out on that front. So do not, okay. do not really miss on that. You have all the current issues being given to you in the revision bootcamp. Please revise that. Please ensure that you're not missing on any of those. Sir, uh, one query, uh, whenever you will add any current issue topic, uh, we will get in, in the session itself. So I need not to check any YouTube channels of you. Uh, it will directly. Oh, yes, yes. Oh, yes, okay. yes. There is so, okay. So anything and everything that you need, Everything is there in your content. There is nothing to be referred anywhere. Okay. There are some sessions that we try to go and go more broader on YouTube. That's something separate. But as far as the curriculum is concerned, you have everything. You don't have to, you know, walk or to run from pole to pillar. That's not required. Everything that is needed, you have it. Where are you, Liana? As in, where are you from, basically? Uh, which country? Hi. And then we can kickstart. Uh, I'm from Ukraine, but I'm located in Poland right now. Right. And uh, um, I'm uh, as for the syllabus, I'm like uh, I just uh, bought the course uh, one week ago, so I managed to reach uh, um, session uh, eleven. 
Hmm. At this moment, uh, I will try, like my plan is uh, to, to finish all the, uh, all the um, syllables till uh, the end of the month. And then probably, I'm not sure, uh, I, I think I will start uh, doing the uh, practice questions. And in the same time with the practice questions, uh, um, are watching the syllabus again, uh, trying to understand, um, like, you know, like what is the, uh, <laughs> like the juice of it. And um, I'm not sure. Sure, yeah, because, uh, you know, like I just uh, I sit, I just um, had an exam uh, in September for IPM. I'm not sure if I pass it or not. Most probably I will not. <laughs> I have a feeling that I will not. <laughs> so, like, you know, like I just jumped from one exam to another and it's very different exam. That's why, you know, like I still in this adjusting phase um, from one main mindset to another mindset mindset so yeah. let me let me tell you one thing firstly uh, i hope you clear your apm that's that's really important one but uh, come what may since you have started on the strategic business reporting uh, there is no similarity uh, liana in between sbr and apm there is no um, have you cleared your sbl by any chance have you cleared your strategic business leader i uh, uh, i said it but i failed it <laughs> Oh, I'm sorry to know that. Let me just tell you, you know, APM and SBL has a lot of similarity. Just to, you know, let you know. Many topics of APM are very much, uh, very much there in SBL and vice versa too. So uh, if you're thinking of, you know, God forbid, if, if result, result doesn't really come your way, you know, this time, whenever you're planning next time, plan APM and SBL, you know, if not together, then one after the other. It really helps you from the standpoint of capitalizing on what you've already done in terms of, you know, the, some, the areas that you would have already covered. The same areas will be tested over there. So it helps. That's one. On the similar ground, SBR and AAA are very similar. There are various topics of SBR that are there in AAA and vice versa too. So that is again something that you can look for if you have not cleared AAA as of now. Just giving you, you know, and uh, while it was not wanted, I just wanted to pen down that so that you're aware that, you know, this is how it is going to be good for you. Just to give you some insight. I already said, I already passed uh, AFM. So like... Okay, um, fair enough. Not required. I will, I will, I will, I will not, yeah, I will not <laughs> state a, 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 anyway. No, fair enough. But the folks who have not cleared it, you know, they can certainly target that. Just to let you know, Liana, in terms of, you know, how, and, you know, I do have one slide coming your way in a while that will talk on in terms of, you know, what philosophy or what strategy I think you need to have for strategic business reporting exam. We'll talk on that in a while. But what is important is that we go one by one and we do not jump on the syllabus area sessions. That's very important and very imperative. We'll start from session number one and we'll, we'll go to session number 27, 28, whatever that number is. We will not see 13 before 12, come what may. Because there is, there is a sequence that I've followed in terms of building that as a concept. So do, do ensure that. Just giving you an insight in terms of you know, how one should be. And this is also for everyone who have just started the course so that they're aware in terms of you know, how one should be really looking forward to. Do not miss anything on that. Go sequential basis. That'll help you in terms of building the right concept in the right manner, in the right way. That's important. Once that is being done, you know, we have a revision boot camp that essentially covers the, the questions. So the way you have exam kits, what I have done is that I have created a video exam kit kind of a thing. So it's a, we, we call it video question marathon, which effectively covers the section A, section B, section C questions. And of course, I do have some concept questions also being done, particularly for you to not miss on what you have already done in financial reporting exam. So there are folks who have done financial reporting exam and then doing SBR. And then there are folks who have straight away come to SBR level since they have got the exemptions and they do not have the, uh, the base understanding of financial reporting as a subject. So these concept questions basically help getting the overall edge on the concepts that are needed to be built up from the financial reporting standpoint, and which you can then capitalize in the strategic business reporting curriculum, which is already there available with you. Just wanted to give you some insight on that. So you'd have concept questions, section A, section B, section C questions, and then you would have current issues also being discussed over there. 
in SBR exam and will come on in, in, a, in a while in terms of, you know, the content that is being there that you really need to scan through and jump through and of course go through. Important is that you're really covering the, the current issues in depth because examiner loves to ask one question for sure onto the current issue. So we will not be missing on that for sure. So once you have done the syllabus area, once you have done the revision bootcamp, then comes my time, my friend. Then you have to give a mock exam to me. Now that is the time wherein I would go through in terms of, you know, how you are progressing and how you are really working out onto those areas. And you will get a detailed performance review on that in terms of, you know, what all areas you need to improve on, what all things are not really going the way they should, and so on and so forth. And once you have that, you know, consume it, work on it, and go and hit the exam in the best possible way. That's what we would be following in the entire curriculum that is available with you. Just wanted to give you an insight or the overview of how this is going to be working just to ensure that you know you are not missing on any of the aspects. Does that help, Liana? Yes, thank you. All right. All right, moving to, moving to Kushagr. Kushagr, uh, I'm seeing you for the first time. So this might be your first session, right? You are not audible. I think you're on mute. Oh, sorry. Is, I'm audible now? Yes, very well. Uh, yeah. Hi, uh, my name is Kushagr and uh, I'm currently based out of Amsterdam. I am working with KPMG Netherlands and I did my CA around three years ago. So my CA final first group three years ago and then I got the opportunity with KPMG Netherlands to work in the corporate finance team. So I'm working as a manager here, but it's been three years that I've not touched studies or I've not um, than anything and you know i did not complete my ca final second group so basically i did not complete my ca so i've always had this to complete something but of course you cannot do your ca while being in europe so my target was to do a similar kind of course or a, do a certification in a global chartered accountancy while being in europe because it's really impossible for me to go back to india and then pursue my ca uh i bought the session yesterday only to be really honest with you to be really candid with you and uh, <laughs> and uh, uh i think uh, uh the fintram team is right now even in the stage of applying for the acc registration to just now i got the email so so i have, so I, have I have got the exemptions on the nine subjects uh because i have my first group clear and i also attempted the ca final group two wherein I got 45 and 46 in costing. That's why I got the nine paper exemption. And uh, yeah, so that's pretty much about it. And I really look forward to complete the ACCA. Excellent, Kushagra, and uh, welcome, welcome on board. I, all I can tell you is that uh, you know, uh, clearing ACCA at the level at which you are at right now at this point in time with the right level of effort and guidance is very easy. The only thing that you need to ensure is that you are not undermining the difficulty level of ACC. Many of the students Absolutely. do that. Many of the students do that. And that is the reason, you know, they, they struggle with it. We at times, and I can tell you coming from the Indian chartered accountancy background, we at times feel that, you know, it is easier than CA. That's not going to be the case. It is as difficult as CA is. The only thing is that you can give one exam at a time, which makes it more flexible and easier for you. That is the only advantage you have. But difficulty level and of course the technicality level is going to be the same. So please do not undermine that. I just wanted to give you, you know, a caveat there because, you know, I've dealt with so many students around the world and I can, I can tell you with, with very high level of confidence that this is something that is a problem area for everyone. Do not undermine that. That's one. Second point, which Ushar, you really need to have as a, you know, as a comfort level for yourself is that the way the sessions have been crafted and drafted and created for you is that you would not miss anything, even if you have got the exemption. So let's say you've got the nine paper exemptions. Now, what all you needed from those nine paper, you know, uh, or not nine exam standpoint, everything is duly taken care of while making the sessions for strategic business reporting exam. So we'll start off the concepts from the very basics, and then we'll build on in terms of, you know, what you really need to know from the SPR standpoint. So anything and everything that you need, start from the basics, the grassroots level to the top hill is covered. So you don't have to refer anything anywhere. That's the first caveat or the uh, underlining statement that I have. Now, second piece is 
the 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 more you are away from studies like in your case you know two years three years not very much in touch with it the most important piece for you would be to go through the syllabus area sessions at least two times not once and that may mean kushag i'm just thinking aloud i don't know where you when you're planning to give your exam but in case you're planning to give your exam in december that may mean that from here to a month or so let's say in one month's time from now you should be able to assess yourself that are you going to sit for the december exam or not and why i say that is if you are not able to complete your first review of the syllabus area by let's say uh, end of this month which is like end of 31st of october you should not plan for december attempt i'm not demoralizing i'm not demotivating i'm showing you the exact picture the one the way and rangan you, you know you you are aware right we had the same discussion last time right you know that that's how you because we you really need to be motivated and motivation can only come once you'll clear the exam so yeah. my prerogative is to tell you that what is the right time of giving it if you are able to complete your syllabus area sessions by 31st of october that's the target that i would have for you then just go ahead and hit the exam good enough because then you would have month or so to go through revision boot camp practice the questions give the mock and so on and so forth you have that time but if you are not able to complete sessions at least once do not plan for december attempt that's my humble suggestion to you would be okay and how many sessions are there sir i think 28 rangan if i'm not wrong 28 right 25 session and rbc you have lot of sessions okay. 25 and then you know the the sessions okay. that you have in revision i also have my job going on so i, I have a job from 9 to 5 and then afterwards i'll study so yeah <laughs> finishing one session a day kushagar is yeah. not difficult you can easily yeah. complete one session in a day i can tell you you know and you and me are no different right i when i was doing these additional professional courses in addition to my ca i was in a full time job and you know i know the quarter ends i know the year ends i know you know i I've, i've gone through all that cycle right but the thing is that if you can complete one session a day come what may you know you know you may want to have that installed in your pc and seeing that in your you know in your office let's say for 20 minutes 30 minutes whatever i used to do that that's good enough but one session a day is something that should be the bare minimum that you need to complete on so all i'm trying to say is that you know make a plan stick with it and stick with it do not really you know change that and assess it in the last date of i think last date of filling the examination fee is 31st of october if i'm not wrong yes if you are not able to you know do the sessions at least once do not fill the exam fees it's it's there is no point right there is no point appearing and not clearing you know my suggestion would be you know while that is not being asked for but i just wanted to you know my, for me you getting motivated is more important than anything else <laughs> so yeah. just just want to give you you know some some sense on that okay fair thank enough you, thank you so, so much. thank you so manohar where are you my friend you i think you started a month back right manohar you're yes, actually yes sir yes yes you're not speaking to me ah uh, wait sir No, no. I, your voice is clear now. Go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, okay, fine. <laughs> yes, sir. Ah, uh, ah. Uh, one month back, I have taken classes. Yeah. Where are you, buddy? Where are you now? Ah, uh, Bangalore. No, no, no. no. As in, India. Good. Thank yeah, you. Yeah. As in, mm-hmm. from uh, where are you from the subject area standpoint? Where, where uh, exactly you are? How many sessions? Ah, fifteen percent. It is showing in software. It is showing fifteen percent. Fifteen percent. That means approximately yeah. six, seven sessions you have done, right? Ah, uh, four sessions, sir. i think uh, up to uh, now i'm studying that intangible effects i i as uh, just and that is yeah. session number 5 so why so yeah. you know why are you so you know you're you're uh, in one month why only five sessions you know yeah, actually i i was busy with my work sir oh. actually some uh, uh, extra hours was there so i think now it's okay i will concentrate more on that planning and december or march yes no sir december i'm going to give so you know i don't have to repeat manohar i think you know everything any explanation that i have given to kushag remains to be the yeah, same it will applicable to me only do yeah, not also. do not undermine the importance and the difficulty level of acca it's very difficult it's not easy you know i'm 
And I, I keep saying this because I want you to, you know, the more I'll tell you this, the more, you know, work you will do on it. And of course, the more marks you'll get on it. So do yeah. not, do not do that. Everything that I've told is, is, you know, really applicable to you. Yes. Live with it, fight with it. And I'm sure that is going to be it. Okay. We will also, be having, uh, we will be having some live sessions as, as we go forward, taking on some specific areas that I really want to highlight or want to put a stress on. Like, you know, I, I really want to have a session on sustainability. Sustainability was something that got tested in September. And I do feel that it's going to be the, uh, the topic of the season. It's not going to be one attempt. There can be multiple attempts in which they, they might ask the questions on this, considering that the entire world is asking about sustainability accounting. So you may, you may get to see a lot of questions and queries on that. We'll talk more on that as we go forward. You know, I, I do have one topic to be discussed and maybe next session that we will have, we'll be talking specifically on that. Is that clear, guys? Yes, sir. You were saying something, Manohar, that I think I cutted you there. Uh, actually, I don't know that there is a uh, link between APM and SBL. In this session, I know that there is yes. a link between it. Actually, I was uh, I was planned to give instead of APM, I was planned to give UK tax session in um, I mean in future, but I am just now I uh, change the decision. You know what? APM. I maybe I that's my personal view. I always I always say this that if you're doing anything, do global, my friend. Do not do UK. Yeah. Okay, sir. Yeah. You know, anything, APM is global, AFM is global, SBL is global, SBR is global. Why UK tax? Why should I get restricted to UK tax? Yes, yes. No just just not not have changed my decision. Yeah. My point is that anything that I would do, anything I've done in my life has always been with a hat global. that I, I have to do something global, right? which is like applicable to everyone. So why should I be talking on that front? But if you love the tax, it is what it is. All right, guys, I do have a small deck that I just wanted to, you know, bring it over here. It is more to give you a perspective in terms of, you know, what you have in front of you in the sessions and how would that look like? I just want to take you through some of the slides. Uh, this effectively gives you a perspective as to what, um, uh, what is going to be in the sessions and what exactly you should be targeting on. And of course, you know, what all are the syllabus areas. I do want to talk on the syllabus areas, the IFRSs that are being covered in the syllabus areas, the capability that that uh, uh, the, the ACCA says that they're expecting it from you. I do want to spend some time on exam pattern and format because this would be a logical uh, logical uh, um, you know segue of, of you to get into the syllabus uh, area content because the more you'll understand that you know how the format and the pattern of the exam is, the better it is for you to really target that in the right, right now in the right right way. So we'll talk on that. We, I do want to spend some time on on SBR professional skills, which is just four marks kind of a thing, but it can make a big kind of big, you know big difference. We'll talk on that, and we'll talk, also talk on you know your SBR course journey because uh, come what may, uh, you really need to know what should be your plan of action for the for the uh, SBR when you will sit for an exam. So we'll talk on that too, and then of course. We can chat, uh, you know, uh, if there is anything that comes to your mind and, you know, you want me to take it up. Uh, now, this is the syllabus area that you have, which is like A to G syllabus area for the strategic business reporting exam. We have fundamental ethical and professional principles, which is like more like ethics. And you always have an ethics question in the exam. You would see that coming your way in the sessions. We have a financial reporting framework as the syllabus area B which it basically takes up the conceptual framework of the financial reporting per se, very well covered in your, in your syllabus areas uh, sessions. We do have reporting of financial performance of the entities. Now this effectively covers, uh, you know, various IFRSs, you know, in terms of, you know, how uh, the reporting of the financial uh, uh, performance of an organization would happen. Multiple IFRSs are covered in this. And of course you have various IFRSs being covered in these sessions that are being provided to you. That will help you go, you know, go through each and every IFRS in detail, along with you, you know, the practice of the questions that you would do. So the way this, the 
the sessions are covered while we are doing the sessions while we are going through the sessions you would have various questions in in those sessions that you will be practicing with me and of course towards the end of the session also you have various questions that you will be solving with me so effectively the concept building also also happens with the help of questions and then of course towards the end we will do revision boot camp we also have financial statement of group, of group entities now you would always find one question in the exam that comes from the group so that is something to be to be thoroughly thoroughly done and of course understood as far as the exam is concerned then comes the interpretation of the financial statement for different stakeholders now this is not the typical ratio analysis that we guys are used to this is this goes beyond that because you now being the strategic business reporting guy of an organization you have to think it from the lens of different stakeholders and do remember this that i have typically highlighted that it is the interpretation of the financial statement from the standpoint of different stakeholders so you have to see it from the standpoint of uh, shareholders from the standpoint of uh, the fund providers from the standpoint of the regulators from the standpoint of the owners of the equities from the standpoint of uh, the auditors and so on and so forth so you you would be wearing different lens in this exam generally you know uh, we feel that strategic business reporting exam would be a practical exam wherein you have to solve and and prepare the financial statement and uh, you know uh, like really really do the numerical work but all i can tell you is that strategic business reporting exam is half theory exam examiner really test your skills in terms of your interpretation because everywhere you know he will not want you to do the calculations he wants you to assess the calculation assess what has happened in the financial statement and then comment back that you know this is what it is and this is what it should be and so on and so forth so there is a lot that needs to be done from the standpoint of you really being curious to understand what is happening on that side of the table and of course really commenting back to the examiner because he would certainly ask discuss comment interpret uh uh speak for it and so on and so forth so you basically have to really talk on the things that are really happening over there you may not have to do a hell lot of calculations which we think considering it's an accounting exam we may need to do nopes that's there's not a financial reporting exam at the skill level wherein the huge weightage is on calculation or preparation over here the weightage is on calculation and preparation but not to that an extent you have to interpret discuss comment on various things that can only happen if you are able to understand the financial statements at large if you can understand the ifrs at large if you understand what the impact of an ifrs would be and so on and so forth is that clear guys all right now coming on uh, to the current issues this is the syllabus area f specifically talks on the current issues now these are like these now syllabus area f keeps changing and you know every time they bring up some current issue or the other which is the talk of the town or the you know uh, you know or the fever of the season that we really need to pick up understand accumulate assimilate and then really talk on and of course we will deliver on and that's what we do we change current issues on ongoing basis the way acc really comes up with new and new issues the sessions that you have have fully fully uh, updated current issues that you really need to go through so go through those current issues what the what are what is happening in the industry we have gone into the details of it and of course then think about it and we have when we when you'll see the sessions you'll realize that you know we have really spoken on when we were doing current issues we have really spoken on in terms of now considering this current issue what can be asked in the exam and if this can be asked in the exam how one should be really answering that towards the end you know we have syllabus area g which effectively is nothing but you knowing the cbe exam framework you knowing the computer based exam and this is something kushagr uh, manohar or you know and leana and everyone you really need to be really need to be aware of that you really need to know if you are giving the the acc exam for the first time you really need to know the computer based exam framework as to how would that work so because you really need to give an exam in the cbe framework so you have to understand the functionalities the modalities if you know it then only you can handle that in the best possible way if you do not know it then you would certainly struggle in the exam we do have specific session that really deals with the uh the the cb framework go through that session before you really start attempting that in the in the acc practice platform is that clear guys yes sir
All right. Moving on, guys, I do want to, you know, bring the, the overall IFRSs that are being covered. Now, you don't have to go through each and every IFRS, but I just wanted to showcase you that these are the IFRSs that are covered in the SBR as a syllabus area, which is huge, right? Starting from conceptual framework to tangible assets, intangible assets, revenue accounting, foreign currency, inventory, prior period, lease accounting, taxes, earning per share, huge, right? We have, you know, the, the coverage of the strategic business reporting exam is huge as far as the content is concerned. And that is the reason I do want to tell you upfront that you have to go through each and every IFRS uh, in detail along with the sessions. And that is where the game changer would be. And that is why I always say that, you know, do, do not underestimate the importance of this exam. Very uh, detailed and of course, at the same time, very broad in terms of coverage. Let's not miss on that. All right, guys. Moving on, you know, uh, I just wanted to, you know, bring this on table because this is something that ACCA actually issued. And you can go through ACCA website also. This effectively has it over there. They want, they have specifically mentioned this, that on the successful completion of this exam, the candidate should be able to. It's more like a capability that they expect, number one apply the ethical and professional principle. Now, this is basically that you should be able to handle your ethics question in the best possible way. And we will certainly prepare you for that. Then evaluate the appropriateness of the financial reporting framework. It's more like understanding the conceptual framework of the financial reporting. We have covered this at length in our sessions. Important is that you're understanding that and are able to implement that. Then comes the evaluation of, or the appropriateness of the, sorry, the application of the professional judgment uh, in relation to the financial performance. Now, this is basically dealing with various IFRSs. So you, the more you'll understand the IFRS, the more you'll understand how one would be applying that IFRS in that particular company or that particular industry, you would have that professional judgment and that is what is needed. We have taken each and every IFRSs under this lens. So do not, do not, do not miss on that. Group accounting, we all know that he really wants you to, you know, to be aware as to what really goes on onto the group accounting. He really wants you to know in terms of what really goes on from the interpretation, very important. And then F, I think, is something very important that you should be able to communicate, which is like discussion, communication, commenting, and et cetera, et cetera, on the accounting regulation or the changes in accounting regulation that are particularly happening from the current issue side of it. So the more you'll, you'll be abreast with that, the best you are able to handle that. And then demonstration of the employability and technological framework is more like handling the CV exam. This is what the examiner expects from you. And I'm sure once you've done the session and the revision bootcamp, A to G will be in your blood. Is that clear, guys? All right. Moving on to guys, you know, the exam format, I really want to spend some time on this in terms of, you know, what the exam format is going to be looking like when you'll be sitting for this exam. We have section A and section B in this exam, wherein you have two questions that comes on in section A and then two questions in section B. The section A questions are primarily the first question of section A would always be of the consolidation. So you would get a consolidated financial statements, the statement of financial position or the statement of PNL and so on and so forth. And he would ask you a few things in terms of, you know, what is going wrong in it? Can you discuss on that? Can you suggest the right IFRS? Can you recommend something and so on and so forth? So effectively, he would not ask you to prepare the consolidated statement of financial position or the PNL, what you may need to do in financial reporting exam at this skill level, not required. But while you may not prepare it, you really have to know as to what really goes behind the scene because you really have to have the full, full understanding of it. And that's what Kushagra, when I was saying that we have covered it in the sessions right from the scratch, we have taken that into consideration that you really need to know this so that you are able to hit this in the right possible way. And that's what we have really covered that. Question number two will always be of the ethics. He will give you some situation in the exam some case study kind of a thing wherein something would not have gone right. As in you being the CFO, somebody being the CEO, they would not have done something right over there, which is causing some kind of an ethical or a professional problem. You should know that, you should understand that, and you should comment back on that this is not right, and this is how it should be. This is what the ethical issue is all about. And we have gone into the depth in terms of, you know, when you will see the session, you'll get to know 
that we have covered these ethical issues at length in terms of you know what can go wrong and if that goes wrong what one should be doing in terms of correcting that is that clear liana all right i'm just trying to make sure that all of us are awake i'm not gonna be making you sleep come what may coming on to section b my friend we have two questions over here that specifically talks on various ifrss now this is something you know i would say this this is where you know you cannot really pen down in terms of you know what area can be tested in the exam so you know there can be current issue that is being tested there can be any ifrs that they'll test you there can be any issue that they really, really want you to comment on discuss on and so on and so forth but he would certainly be asking various ifrs in these two questions and each question carries 25 marks each one caveat that i really want to call out over here and this really goes on to all of you guys you should not do cherry picking in this exam. There cannot, there cannot be a scenario wherein Rangan says, you know what, these are the IFRSs that are being tested in five years, last five years. I will only do these five, these, these IFRSs and I leave others behind. Nope, that is not going to be happening. You have to cover each and every IFRS. You cannot, you cannot lose on any because I can tell you, examiner is super smart there. He would test you wherein you are weak. He will surely test you. The important is that we should know all of the IFRSs and all of the RSRSs. There is no compromise there. Moving on, guys, we have, you know, many of the, many of the times we don't realize that there are professional marks. If you, if you would have sat for SBL and if you will sit for SBL, in strategic business leader exam, there are 20 marks that relates to the professional marks. So it is more like how you write your exam can give you 20 marks in SBL. And how you write your exam in SBR can give you four marks. There are four marks in the exam that are related to how you are writing your strategic business reporting exam. Two marks in section A and two marks in section B. And I can tell you, two marks in section A are awarded for applying the right ethical principle that is going wrong and recommending the right actions for it. So you, are, you don't have to do anything more, but if you're doing something right, he'll give you two extra marks for it. It's like free marks for me, right? Why should I leave it on? In section B, that there are two professional marks that are being given that would be given to you for appropriate discussion related to the conceptual framework. So whenever you're writing something, you should know who you are really writing that for, who you are thinking about an impact for, whether it is an impact on investor, whether it is an impact on regulator, you should know who your audience is and you should be able to contemplate and write in relation to it. That will give you two extra marks because you're really understanding your audience, really having the right discussion of the conceptual framework in relation to that audience and so on and so forth. All of these is really covered when you will see the ethics questions and, of course, the other questions in your revision boot camp. We have covered this at length over there. Is that clear, guys? All right. Now, I, I think I have already discussed it, but I just want to you know, give you a sense check as to what this is going to be. Uh, you know, the, the, the course that you have in front of you and, of course, what you already have from Fintram, you know, that has detailed video lectures on each and every syllabus areas, and that comes with the unlimited views. You can see it as many times as you want. We have a comprehensive study material that has already been handed over to you. You can, of course, print it and, of course, see it, uh, and, of course, you know, save it for yourself. We have a revision bootcamp wherein we will be doing and practicing various questions, my friend, that also have the, uh, you know, the concept questions, the section A, section B, and, of course, the past exam questions, which are being solved, giving you all the tips and tricks. We also have given you the computer-based exam training and, of course, related guidance. We would be having various live sessions. And, of course, I would be also be giving you my, my WhatsApp number, wherein if there is anything that you really want to bring on table to me, you can just text me. And, of course, whenever I can, I would certainly reply to you on that. And, of course, you know, try to solve it there and then. You would also have a mock exam, my friend, after what you, you know, after doing all of that, that we just spoke. Once you have done that, then we will certainly talk on your individual performance and we'll give you a review over there so that you're improving day by day. 
Okay, so I'm on my last slide, guys. You know, anything that you may have in your mind, we can just talk through. You can also reach out to FinTram if you are new and, of course, thinking of, you know, taking the FinTram sessions. You can certainly reach out the number I provided you and, of course, the, the website address that I have provided you. You can certainly reach out to folks and, of course, they'll be happy to help in terms of taking, to, taking this to the level that you want. That's what broadly I wanted to cover over here, my friend, as far as your basic orientation of the strategic business reporting exam is concerned. I'm happy to take any questions, any queries anyone may have. Um, sir, uh, Rangan here. Uh, I, have a, uh, I have a small query regarding this CV uh, answer sheet. So suppose there is a question which is saying that uh, please elaborate the goodwill calculation method and then calculate the goodwill, something like that, where I need to write down how, uh, as per IFRS, this goodwill should be calculated and then uh, calculate the goodwill. So can I directly use the spreadsheet uh, to write down the theoretical part and the computation part or I need to use both uh, the spreadsheet and what? I think process. you should you always use the spreadsheet for calculation and for writing piece, you should use the word processor. In word processor, you should give reference to that working note that you have prepared in the spreadsheet. Okay. Always advisable. Okay. And sir, one suggestion maybe, sir, in one RBC question, if you can uh, no, uh, do it on a CV directly in the it is, it is, it is, if possible. It is coming your way, Rangan. It is coming your way. It's already in pipeline. It is coming your okay. way. Okay, you sir. would get it maybe in five to six days of time. You'll get it. Oh, okay, sir. Okay. It's already done. But, uh, you know, due to, you know, me not being well, we were not able to issue oh. it or release it. So we'll, we'll definitely release it by next week. All right. Anybody else, guys? Gurpreet, I have not heard anything from you, my friend. Are you angry with me, Gurpreet, by any chance? No, sir, no. Can I? Oh, sorry. Okay, just join it. All right. Just join. So, Gurpreet, you, you, don't, you, don't, you don't want me to see you? You have not switched on your camera? <laughs> not possible, sir, right now. <laughs> All right. Gurpreet, you know what? One mandate that I always have in my session is that my sessions are video-based sessions. So, you know, you have to really open up your cam you know, cameras uh, going okay. forward. So, just wanted to, you know, okay. give you a perspective around that. Okay. Having said that, Gurpreet, how are you feeling? You just you you just got enrolled or you like took it? I have just enrolled today. Uh, enrolled today? Yeah. Oh, very good. So, what is, what, what is Fintram doing? They're giving me all the new students today. Okay, good. Very good. So, uh, Gurpreet, anything, uh, you know, I hope you attended the session. Anything that I can help yeah. you, my friend, anything that I can give you some perspective on, you know, that just you know, just wanted to understand if there is anything or any way I can really support you. Not, not required. All right. Thank you, Gurpreet. But if you, you if you have any questions, queries, anything, you know, feel free to, you know, email sure. me, WhatsApp me. We'll be happy to, you know, help and support. And of course, with the coming, uh, you know, live sessions that we would have, we'll certainly kill any doubts also that you may have. Sure. All right. Liana, you were saying something. I have not yeah, forgotten I, you. I had, I had a question, so I would like to ask you. Um, because I was um, sitting a, a um, financial reporting like two or three years ago, I don't remember too probably. Uh, I remember that there was a question about the consolidations and um, basically now when I watch the syllabus, the syllabus quite alike to financial reporting. So uh, my question is what are the differences between uh, financial reporting questions and uh, advanced financial reporting? Like for example, how the consolidation questions are different from advanced financial reporting? So you know, honestly speaking, Diana, there is no difference. The questions remains to be the same. Issue remains to be the same. Mm -hmm. the only challenges or the only difference is what he's asking you now is different than what he'll be asking in financial reporting. In financial reporting exam, what he was asking you was that prepare a consolidated statement of financial position. Mm -hmm. These are the two uh, companies. This is when they acquired. These are the adjustments. Prepare the consolidated statement of financial position or PN. In SBR, he'll give you that. He'll give you that this is the consolidated PNL or consolidated statement of financial position. You don't have to prepare it. But mm -hmm. then he'll tell you that these are the things that have happened in it. Correct. Mm -hmm. 
Ah, correct it, yes. Discuss it, mm -hmm. suggest. So it's more theoretical rather than compute. Compu yes, compu that is what I was saying that, you know, this exam, while it is, it is supposedly an accounting exam and every one of us feels that it will be accounting, we are rock star in it, we'll solve it, but it is just not calculations. He's be, he'll be testing your skills on various IFRSs. For example, just give me an you know, example. In a group accounting, if some of the IFRSs at the time of consolidation you have applied wrongly, he'll give it to there. <laughs> now you need to know that you know what idly should have been happening in this IFRS, what have they done, what they should do, and what is the impact that this has on the consolidation. So you may have to rework the goodwill, just taking an example, considering that you know adjustment is impacting the goodwill, you'll rework the goodwill. And at the same time, you'll tell them that you know this is the impact and this is what one should be looking at. Mm -hmm. You'll get to know about that, uh, Liana, once you'll do the revision bootcamp questions because that specifically deals with what you really need to know. Okay. Thank you. Anything else, guys, anyone may have? I'm happy to chat. We still have time. I don't want to lose out on that. Anything, any wild doubt anyone may have, I'm happy to chat on. Uh, just a small doubt, although you have already covered this, uh, but still, like you know that I have I have not been in touch with the studies for the last three years. So it's like I'll be starting from the scratch now. And uh, from the talks of it, it looks like this exam is an extension of the financial reporting paper in ACCA or the financial reporting paper in CA. Uh, so do I need to, and you also said that your sessions already cover the concepts on the financial reporting in the first sessions and then you build up towards the SBR. But do you think it would also be good for me to revise my own uh, financial reporting sub and then? Nope. Okay. It okay. says straight away, no, my friend, nothing okay. doing, nothing okay. doing. Okay. What okay. you need, my friend, you have it with you. Okay. Okay. Just okay. believe in it. Trust. Okay. You have trust in me and yeah, yeah, yeah. in your God and sky is the limit. <laughs> All right. All right. All right. Okay. What okay. we have created and I, you know, I'm proud of that. What we have been able to create is something that the, the, the students are really needing. So there is nothing that you need. In fact, you know what? I really call this out that you don't have to refer any book. Please don't refer any okay. book. Not required. It is what it is. All that you may need to do is practice the past exam questions more. That is good enough. You have the entire content with you. You have the revision bootcamp with you. If you and do want to do anything more, practice the past exam questions and go and hit the exam. And of course, treat me with the cup of coffee when I'm there in your country. <laughs> would love to, would love to. <laughs> I, I can tell you, you know, I have coffee now being due, you know, around the globe and I have, you know, touch wood. By the grace of God, I have students in all the countries, you know, um, who I can really go and uh, who I can, who I have really accrued coffee for. So I can really go back and, you know, can, can really, you know, convert that accrual into reality when I'm in that country. We'll have a virtual coffee once the sessions. I'm go, I'll complete the sessions. I'll come to Amsterdam, <laughs> my friend. You don't, you don't know me, you know, I'm a, I'm a, I used to be living in plane or in, or in a suitcase at, at, a, at a point in time. I was the you know, global financial uh, director for uh, BCG before before really starting off my own, my own venture. So I have I have I'm used to living in suitcases. So you, you don't know you know when I really land up in Amsterdam. It's a beautiful country. I've seen that. Yeah, yeah. indeed. <laughs> thank you, thank you for your guidance, sir. Liana, you are saying something. I'm not I'm yeah. not missing you and ignoring you. Don't worry. I'm, 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 <laughs> that is the reason, you know, I always say keep your cameras open because I would get to know who is asking when. Yes. Uh, so your uh, suggestion uh, is to pass the syllabus as fast as possible and then concentrate on the uh, questions rather than concentrate on the theor theoretical part. Um, I mean, Rather than concentrating on the theoretical part itself, it's better to concentrate on the uh, re revising more uh, practical questions, right? Because you know what, Liana, the theory that you need to write in the exam is actually covered in those questions. Mm -hmm. You effectively have to deal with the question over there, right? 
and you have to deal with a scenario over there. You have to know, understand how one should be writing, how one should be understanding, how one should be contemplating, how one should be assessing and so on and so forth. That you would be able to understand once you'll start practicing the questions. With me, without me, by your own hand. So there is like one, two months, uh, two, two months or one month and a half will be enough uh, for example, if uh, to sit uh, two, three hours per day will be enough to practice uh, the, um, or like, you know, to, to see through the practical questions? I would say finish the syllabus area by 31st of October, come what may. And then do the revision boot camp, see the revision boot camp at least twice. While you're doing that, start practicing questions by your own hand. That should go in parallel. If you have done it, then only sit for an exam. Otherwise, push it. Not, not right. Not, not the right one. Okay. First target should be that before 31st of October, Liana would come back to sir and say, sir, I've finished it. <laughs> That's what you really need to nail. Once you nail it down, then sky's the limit, my friend. All right. Anybody else, guys? Anything that I can help you out with? <clears throat> I'm sorry. Anything that you want to chat on? You know, we have to consider these discussions to be to be heart to heart discussions, right? The more you'll talk on, the more you'll want me to help you. I can help you. Manohar, uh, how? these orientations happen like, so orientation uh, is of course one which is like this is the the orientation that we always do once in a quarter kind of a thing and then you have some live sessions coming your way depending upon when i think that you know depending on the queries that you may have or depending upon the topics that i really need to talk on we will have some live sessions we'll talk on yeah. the problem areas the current issues i as i said you know i do want to take one session on the sustainability that is surely yeah. coming. And of course, then, you know, I'm always available on, on you know, on, on the WhatsApp, uh, you know, on chatting, you know, if there is anything that you need help on, happy to really support on and, you know, we should be able to kill this. Okay. Okay. All right. Manohar, my friend, no doubt from you. I'm, I'm, I'm missing you, my friend. No, sir. We'll do that. No, we'll do that. What? We'll, we'll ask. Uh, we'll ask I you. mean, uh, uh, for, uh, completing, completing up sessions up to 31st October. Yep. Yes. Next mm -hmm. time when I'm meeting, if I'm not hearing that you have already completed the session, then I'm really getting angry on you. Okay, sir. Okay. We'll do that. I will do that. All right. Good. Preet, anything I can help you out, my friend, before I just wrap this up? No, sir. Actually, I'm attending your session and you will complete the session by 31st or prior to 31st of October. I love so that. I, the examination. I love that spirit. You have to do that, my friend. Yes, thank you. All right, guys. I think if we do not have anything, let's just wrap this up. It was a pleasure being here. And of course, chatting with you is always, always great. We'll definitely look forward and try to kill this as max as possible. And of course, you know, I have to work for my coffee. So I would certainly do that. <laughs> All right, guys. Thank you very much. Have a good day. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.